Birthdays, holidays, promotions, there's a lot in this world worth celebrating. But nothing is worth celebrating more than knowledge that pays off. Like understanding how compound interest works, knowing how to check your investment professional's background, or figuring out your risk tolerance. Or finally understanding those terms your friends throw around like ETF, ESG, and ICO. Learn about these investment products and more at Investor.gov, your unbiased resource for valuable investment information, tools, and tips. Before you invest, Investor.gov. Bob and Cherry, sponsored by Bank of America Customized Cash Rewards Credit Card. You can earn 3% cash back on online shopping, making the essentials even more rewarding. Here's Bob and Sherry. This show holds a very dear place in my heart. The Bob and Sherry Show with Bob. I'm wearing pants. Yeah. And Sherry. You look at all the things you've managed to do for yourself. And now, broadcasting from the palatial Bob and Sherry studios, it's Bob and Sherry. Five things you should stop doing in the shower. <laughs> I want to help you, okay? okay? You are probably doing these things and stop it because it's just, not good for you. I'm just telling you right now, mm. I will be making toast in my shower. I don't <laughs> care what you say. Here are five things you shouldn't do, and people don't even think about this. Uh, number one, washing your face. It's easier and it saves time to wash your face when you're already in the shower. However, the water is usually hotter than it is in the sink. Higher temperature can make your skin dry out. I never thought about that. For me, it was always like the hotter, the better, you know, getting the dirt out of my face. I think what would make my skin look better is me sleeping a little bit longer. So yeah. I will be washing my face yeah. in the shower. Yeah. Um, forgetting to wash your feet. It's not enough to just let the water and the soap run down on your feet. You should scrub your feet as well. And, and there's that- a lot of devices they have for that now. They have they have feet scrubbing devices. Yeah, they have the kind that are that actually sit on the floor of the shower, and then they also sell ones that are detachable that you can get that you can actually do your feet that has soap and some uh, exfoliating properties to it. Am I the only person that's a little bit sad that the same species that can go to outer space has to be told to wash their piggies? I know. (laughs) But anyone I else show fans? No, you're anyone? right. I think you're exactly right. Uh, not washing or replacing your loofah regularly. Loofahs are sponges and breeding grounds for bacteria. So they should be washed and air dried regularly and changed at least a couple of times a year. Those things get skanky. I think they do. Fast. I think they do. I mean, putting that on your face... Can you imagine putting like I would never the put a sponge on my face. the sponge from from uh, the kitchen on your face? Who what kind of looney tune would wash their face with a loofah? Talk about exfoliating. Yeah, I know. Um well this is good. Leaving your razor in the shower just like your loofah. There are lots of nooks and crannies that make perfect spots for bacteria to hide. And when your razor is sitting in a warm wet environment in the shower every day, it's even worse and then you put it on your face. You know, I heard a guy, he was like one of these guys who uh, just by saving here and saving there became a millionaire, you know. He said, you can make those expensive razors that we all, most of us buy, you can make them last a whole lot longer by doing one simple thing. When you're finished shaving your face, this is, and I guess for women too with the legs, um, dry it. Dry it. Dry because it. it'll corrode otherwise. It, it, it improves the lifespan of a razor uh, dramatically. And damn, I, why are those razors so expensive? I do so many things in the shower that it's ridiculous. Really? I, I, I drink in the shower, coffee in the morning, cocktails at night. I give the dog a bath in the shower. I mean, I'm doing everything in the shower. You, you bring in coffee to the shower? Yeah. Coffee or a glass of wine or a beer on a hot summer night. Really? Yeah. I have never done that in my life. Oh God! You, we've talked about this. You have no no notion of what a beer shower is. It's the one of the greatest pleasures in life. Maybe if it was a shower that on a hot summer day in an outdoor shower, that might be good. I can't see it inside the house though. Um, what do you mean you can't see it? Inside well, I'd like to compartmentalize. I'm taking a shower now. All right, I'm scrubbing my feet. All right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I'm, you're welcome. Have 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 I ever offended? Have my feet ever offended you? <laughs> I just can't. Have my believe, feet ever you? I just can't believe we have to turn a microphone and say uh, hello, humanity. Yeah. Um, the scrubbing doesn't end at your knees. Like, yeah, how do exactly. People not I know, know that. 
Uh, and also, taking super hot showers, not only can it dry out your skin, but there's a lot of research that shows that uh, taking cold showers can actually be beneficial to your health. Even a quick blast of cold water before you leave the shower is probably good for you. It's kind of hard to do. I don't really. I'll do that in a hot, you don't a hot do day. That? I'm not going to do that on a cold day. I'm not going to uh, be cold. No. I was always impressed that the West Point first year plebes, I think they're called. Yeah, no. They had to get up at five in the morning and take cold showers. Yeah. That's why I I went to Temple. I said, West Point away. (laughs) They used to teach us in health class, take a hot shower and you finish cold and it closes your pores. Now, I don't know if there's any truth to that, but that's what they taught us. You know who used to do that? I I read about this just the other day. I was reading something about Hollywood um, icons. You know, Paul Newman? I, I couldn't believe when Paul Newman died because he still looked like he was about 40, you know, and I guess he was 80 something. But uh, he knew he had to keep his face in really good shape. And I don't know if this is a good idea or not, but almost every day he would take a big, uh, like a bowl, a giant bowl, and fill it with cold water and ice. And he would submerge his face. No, I'm not. In the, in, and, but he looked good. He did look good. Man, nah, it's probably jeans on his He did now. look good. But I think if you start off looking like Paul Newman. Yeah, it's easier. It's like you're at the beginning of the race and you got shot out of a cannon yeah, and the rest of us true. are trying desperately. I know, to it's true. Off. It is very, very true. All right, well, that's, um, that's yeah. all very helpful wash stuff. Wash your feet, that's okay? Very helpful stuff. Well, and... Go wash your feet. It's the best of Bob and Sherry. Get Lamar's review sent right to your phone. Text MOVIE to 888-BOB-SHARE. The New Yorker did a funny thing. They asked a bunch of real people to confess. um, What's something you've done that is way more embarrassing than getting caught watching porn? Because you would think getting caught watching porn would be the most embarrassing thing. But here are some real, actual people's confessions. Um, Accidentally saying, love you, Dad. At the end of a conference call with my boss and other managers. Why would you do that? I, in the same way that when you're a kid, you accidentally call your teacher mommy. Oh, yeah. Or yeah, when yeah. when someone says something to you and you respond. Thanks, hon. Thanks, you too. Even yeah. though what they said, it yeah. makes no sense, right? right. Um, posting on social media about how I just had a big breakthrough in therapy and then nobody liked the post for nine <laughs> hours. <laughs> That's that's some hang time, isn't it? Um, attending. Um, what 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 do you think went through the person's mind that people were now just going? Oh, I didn't know he needed help. Well, you know what? I something think? like that. Actually, I think that no one, none of that person's friends saw that post. It could be, yeah. Because not everybody is hovering over their social media twenty four seven. That's true. Um. Feeling confident that it'll only take about three seconds to remove a distressing booger dangling from my nose. Oh, God. But finding it actually takes longer than planned. And in that extra time, my teenager records it on TikTok. (laughs) That's the worst. That's awful. That is awful. Yeah. Um, Posting Instagram photos of myself jumping midair next to the Chicago Bean, the Statue of Liberty, the St. Louis Arch, and the Astor Place Cube, even though it's 2020 and I'm an adult. That's that's forgivable. That's okay. Um, let's see. What's more embarrassing than getting caught watching porn? Projecting my computer screen during a meeting and getting a notification for an email from my dad that says, I filed your tax returns. Oh, that's terrible. In front of other <laughs> front of co-workers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's more embarrassing than watching porn that time i was so rude to my waiter doug who honestly tried his best to make sure that my garden salad contained per my request only a medium to light volume of croutons <laughs> <laughs> you know i admire that person because For owning that. they were yep. being a real tool yep um accidentally unplugging my headphones at work while listening to music and now everybody knows that i still listen to creed oh god wow, that's the worst. yeah <laughs> oh, getting on facebook to check in with my bitcoin enthusiast group hey i admire mm-hmm. anybody that has a bitcoin enthusiast group listen, and knows how yeah. that stuff works if you can understand it that's right what is i mean what would be more embarrassing for you than that we have such a high um, threshold for embarrassment. Oh, yeah. Here. Well, I mean, just listen to the show. 
Um, um, it takes a lot. I guess walking into a meeting with my fly open, I guess, would be up there. Um, how would you like, let's pause here. How would you like to be informed that your fly is open if you walk into that meeting? How would you like us to tell you that that's happening? Do you want me to text you? Yeah, once I get home. You yeah. want to spend the whole yeah. meeting with your barn Pro- door open? Probably, yeah, probably. How would you like to be notified, Max, that your fly is open? You want me to text you? Yeah, text me. Can I tell you? Can I com- confess something? Mm-hmm. I sat here all morning. With your fly open, yes. I know. And didn't you knew? Mm-hmm. Why didn't you say something to me? I meant to. Sherry. I meant to. You I know for- me well enough that you could get oh, away I, with saying Oh, I would have said. I would have said. I would have said, Tantor needs back in the cage. No, we were talking and I noticed it and then That's we moved fault. on. Because I went to the bathroom and I went, oh, great. Because I walked in here one day and it took about a millisecond before that was pointed out. Well, because and you did all of the cliches. The barn door is open, blah, blah, blah. Because you were right at eye level. Max was over there sitting, minding his business. Yours was right in my face. Well, if I didn't have to give you these dances every morning, it wouldn't have been. Well, maybe if you did your homework, I wouldn't make you dance every day. (laughs) Think about that, why don't you? Yeah. I don't know. What else is just terribly embarrassing that you can get caught with? I think, you know, just the old things going back to school, being unprepared. But, you know, I'm always prepared for this show, so that's not an issue. You know, it's funny that I prepare to be silly, but when I was in school, I didn't prepare to do something that was, you know, serious. Like an exam. Like an exam. Serious stuff. Isn't that... That's that's awful. That's because you decided that you were going to be an entertainer. A silly man. And you knew what your destiny was. And you know what? You focused on it and look where you are. Yep. Yep. Over here with my fly open talking to you. (laughs) It worked. Yeah, it it did. It all all came to fruition. (laughs) It's Bob and Sherry. We've got them. Dim-witted individuals. Simple people. With Bob and Sherry. You're a moron. It's morons in the news. Off we go here today. This is some amateur hour driving and dashing right here. Three women and a man recently went to a restaurant in Charleston, South Carolina. What a beautiful city. Their bill was $77, but they only put 25 bucks on the table and they took off. But it turns out they left something else behind. One of the women somehow left her ID on the table. <sighs> so now the police are going to track her down. She is a 23-year-old named Sadia Marinol, and she is wanted on charges of defrauding public accommodations. I guess that's what dining and dashing is. What a what a terrible crime that is. You not only screw the restaurant but the server and those, at the same time those profit margins are slim so slim and that that server is making nothing no. shame on you yep okay let's go to baton rouge where a couple um stole a thousand dollars worth of beer from a target they just loaded up the shopping buggies and took off without paying that is brass right there yep. that's a lot of beer yep. but wait there's more they weren't satisfied stealing stuff from Target. They went to Walmart, and the man, her name is Ashley, his name is Matthew. The man put a drill down his pants and tried to struggle it, smuggle it out of the Walmart. <laughs> is that a drill in your pants? I mean, that one writes itself. Yeah, it does. Text the word moron to 888-262-7437. We will not only send today's more of the day to your phone, we will register you to automatically win some Bob and Sherry hand sanitizer. <laughs> it's our own private brand. It's called People Make Me Sick. Now, let's go to Orlando, Florida, where cops there are searching for a burglary suspect. He was caught um, on a ring video camera committing a lewd act on the victim's porch. First, he cut the screen door. Um, and he unlocked the door and went into the back patio and then he be- he began to commence yeah, to committing yeah. a lewd Jeez, what act. is wrong with that? Was he drunk? There's no, I mean, they don't know because they haven't gotten him yet, so oh, they can't breathalyze him. Yeah. yeah. Um, here's an exciting case out of Harlan, Iowa. An Iowa judge has ordered a psych evaluation for a man who said, Judge, I would like you to allow me To have a sword fight with my ex-wife and her attorney so that I can rend their souls from their bodies. You know, I know it's illegal and wrong, but I understand. 
<laughs> We've all been there. His name is David Ostrom. He's 40. And he said that his former wife, Bridget, and her attorney, Matthew Hudson, had destroyed him legally. And he feels that the thing that is fair is trial by combat. And he also <laughs> said, Your Honor, trial by combat has never been explicitly banned or restricted <laughs> as a right in these United States. How'd the judge like that? And he said that um, his former wife could let her attorney act as her champion, and she herself would not have to swing a sword. The judge sighed heavily right. and then ordered him into a psych evaluation. So, um, what would the country be like? The way we're divided, the way everybody is if so hopped up. If we could have trial by if, combat. If we, if we could have trial by combat where you could, somebody's ticket you, has ticked you off and you can challenge he or she to a sword battle or a duel. I really people, am not leaving the house anymore. I, people would be dropping like flies. Yeah, I'm really staying home. Yeah. All right, that is Morons in the News. Once again, text the word MORON to 888-262-7437. Send today's to your phone. You might even win some People Make Me Sick hand sanitizer. There you go. Laura's reviews sent to your phone and qualify for a Fandango gift card. Text MOVIE to 888-BOB-SHERRY. The other day we were giving Bob a hard time about how much he likes the sun, but he's kind of like management and the sun is his employee. He wants to know where the sun is at all times and what it's doing, but he has no interest in actually looking at the sun or spending a lot of time with the sun. Is that is that yeah, fair? Yeah. You're just like management in that regard. Well, they, I mean, who hasn't heard the uh, heads up that you should not, you know, bake too yourself much sun. in the sun. Yeah. Well, I, I was driving home from work that day and I thought, you know, as much as Bob loves the sun, I wonder how much he really knows about the sun. Like, how much do you really know about the this sun? This is a very sneaky way to get into one of your science corner things. <laughs> And I see it for what it is, Miss Sherry. What do you know about the sun, though? Seriously, because I I went and researched and have learned awesome things about the sun. I I know enough about it. Don't stare at it. Or we could cower in darkness like savages and talk about the Kardashians. We we revolve around it. You know, it has explosions. Did you know that the sun is an almost perfect sphere? Now, considering how gigantic the sun is... That's like the closest thing to a perfect sphere that we've ever been able to observe in nature. So the Earth is not as perfect a sphere oh, no, as no, the sun no, is? No, 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 no. Well, because there are explosions on the sun. They, oh, yeah. They're going off oh, yeah. well, like it's nuclear a big, bombs. It's a big hydrogen bomb, yeah. the sun is. Here's how big the sun is. Now, you know the sun's big, right? Right. But here's a way to think about how gigantic and huge the sun is. If the sun were hollow, we could fit almost a million earths inside the sun really you didn't know it was that big did no you? no yeah that's a that's a, that's big a lot sun. of earths yeah a million earths hmm. how long does it take the light from the sun to reach the earth and our studio so that todd will stop yelling or bob will stop yelling at todd demanding to know where it is how long does that take 20 seconds good guess but no come on you can do this Two seconds. Eight seconds. Hmm. It takes um, the sun's energy eight seconds. But here's what's really... If he didn't say 20 seconds, I was going to say like uh, five hours. Five (laughs) hours. Something like that. Yeah. So check this out. Even though the energy from the earth reaches the sun in eight minutes, it took millions of years. So the energy, I want you to imagine this because this is like totally mind-blowing. The heat of the sun on your face... Mm-hmm. took eight minutes to leave the sun's surface to reach your face, mm-hmm. but it took that energy millions of years to come from the core of the sun to the surface to your face. Mm-hmm. So the heat that you feel on your face right now is millions of years old. Mm-hmm. How cool is That's that? That's really cool. Mm-hmm. You're welcome, by the way, for my effort to research the sun for you. Sorry, I didn't say thank you. I was thinking. You know what? A fruit, <laughs> a fruit basket later would not uh-huh. be amiss. Um, the sun Cor- with fruit caressed by the sun. <laughs> the sun. You want to guess how hot the sun is very inside? Hot. Very, very hot. Very hot. 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 Take a guess. Just shoot me a number. Come on, you can do it. <clears throat> Oh, Hotter than those mashed potatoes you get at KFC. Well, not that, hot. No, oh, not that nothing, hot. Nothing is. 
God. 15 million degrees Celsius. They know Celsius. that it's 15 million degrees. Science is just science is so BA. Uh, science is awesome. You're not believing the scientists. No, he I am. He doesn't believe. No, he I totally with believe me. it. It's just amazing they could know something like that. He argues with me. Uh, I can't. We won't get into like the sun's mass and all of that because that's hard for me to understand too. I just think so. That I would have no chance. No chance. <laughs> I just think it's best. This for is why you I hate the Sherry know, Science know, Corner. It's always insulting. This is why it's best for you to just think about a million Earths fitting inside. Yeah. Now the sun is middle aged. I don't know if you knew that. It's not a young sun and it's not an old sun. It's middle aged. It's about four and a half billion years old. It's burned off about half of its hydrogen. It has enough left to go for another five billion years. I don't like to hear about this. Part. I know you don't. One day the sun. I don't want to hear about it. Will collapse. Mm. Well, here's what's trippy. It'll still have its mass, but it'll collapse to be the size of our Earth. Now, keep in mind, a million of our Earths can fit inside it right now. Mm. But when it collapses, it'll be the size of our Earth. It'll be denser than my youngest child's head. That's how dense it's going to be. And when that happens, it'll be known as a white dwarf. Right now, it's a yellow dwarf star. It'll be a white dwarf star, but we—that's what I was known as, it, you know, <laughs> the in, white the, dwarf. In, in my first three years the in elementary dwarf? school. Yeah. Isn't that insane to think yeah. about? And then everyone would die no. because there's no sun, unless well, Google can figure out some way. I'm with you that I don't like to think about no, one like day the sun that. winks out. Like yeah. that's even though it's five billion years from now. Right. But at that point, maybe science will, if we haven't annihilated yeah. ourselves as a species, maybe we'll have found another habitable planet to occupy. So yeah, the well, they just found age. another Earth, right? The sun is middle-aged. The sun is middle-aged. Did the sun find a much younger sun to date now? And <laughs> oh, yeah. As a sports car. Yeah, yeah. It's middle-aged, but it looks older because of the sun. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of the downside of being the sun. You can't escape yourself. You can't escape yourself. It's also the downside of being me. <laughs> <laughs> So we bring science full circle. Exactly. exactly. Right back to the white dwarf stage. <laughs> See, fun facts about the sun. You know what I just heard? What? It's the best <laughs> Bob and Sherry. <laughs> best, the best. You guys kill me. I love you, Bob and Sherry. Oh, thank, thank you so you. much. But it gets better. <laughs> Birthdays, holidays, promotions, there's a lot in this world worth celebrating. But nothing is worth celebrating more than knowledge that pays off. Like understanding how compound interest works, knowing how to check your investment professional's background, or figuring out your risk tolerance. Or finally understanding those terms your friends throw around like ETF, ESG, and ICO. Learn about these investment products and more at Investor.gov, your unbiased resource for valuable investment information, tools, and tips. Before you invest, Investor.gov. Do you own or rent your home? Sure you do, and I bet it can be hard work at times. You know what's easy? Bundling policies with GEICO. GEICO makes it easy to bundle your homeowner's or renter's insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing, too, because you already have so much to do around your home. Go to GEICO.com, get a quote, and see how much you could save. It's GEICO easy. Visit GEICO.com today. That's GEICO.com. It's the Bob and Sherry Store's Sizzling Summer Sidewalk Sale. Everything in stock is on sale 10% off. 10% off. Including Sherry Lynch's cookbook, Cooking with Cats. And swag you can use, like Bob and Sherry 24-ounce latte mugs, travel mugs, H2Go water bottles, and... And our very hot line of Mother of All Mothers merch, including tote bags, candles, wear around tea and sleep shirts. 10% off! It's the Sizzling Summer Sidewalk Sale. Everything is 10% off. Just hit shop at bobandcherry.com and use the discount code PODCAST at checkout. Bob and Cherry, sponsored by Bank of America Customized Cash Rewards Credit Card. You can earn 3% cash back on online shopping, making the essentials even more rewarding. Here's Bob and Cherry. So we're uh, running down this list of things that women would like to put into their lives because they're bored. And guys, you've got to listen to this because you're going to have to come up with some of this stuff. Here are the uh, 10 things. Number 10, singing in public. Number 9, getting a boob job. Number 8, going back to school. Number 7, trying something new in bed. I still can understand why you just can't bring that up. I don't, what, what are we we supposed to be, you know, mind readers and, and figure it out? Okay, you know? seriously. Mm. So, like, let's say we're together um, because my dreams could come true. Right. Let's say we're together. Okay, and, so, so this is your fantasy. And one day I come to you, and yeah. it's, you know, it's what it is, right? And one day I come to you I'm and sorry, say... I'm sorry, what was that? 
It's it's what you know. It's our relationship is what it is, and everything's been like one way for a really long time. It's okay? what it is. No, it's. I mean, it's you know we have our thing, and then one day I come to you and I say, you know what would be really fun, Bob? You know, since mm-hmm. we don't have to get up for work tomorrow morning, is yeah. Um, I was thinking I could yeah. be Little Red Riding Hood, and you could be mm. the Big Bad Wolf, mm. and you could you know eat me up, and then after that, or just look at me with your great big eyes or whatever, right? Yeah. Mm. Then after that. Then you think that the kinky door has been opened, mm-hmm. and now it's going to be all sorts of constant insanity. Women do not, just because we want to do one thing one time, does not mean that we're opening the door for whatever. And I have had conversations with women. Why, why am I the big bad wolf who gets slaughtered by the farmer with an axe later? <laughs> I've had conversations with women where they said, you know, so one time I said, okay, and now it's like, that's all he talks about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you understand why women are hesitant? Yeah, but I mean, it doesn't have to go to that length. But you know that it does. You know what I find with women a lot is there's a complaint that it's very, very boring. And then so you just say, please bring it up. And now here you are with another issue about bringing something up. You're impossible to please. Impossible to please. This is why we can't be together. <laughs> it's not that we're impossible to please. It's because we don't want... <sighs> this is why people have affairs. This is why people have affairs. Because they won't say to their husband, I really would like you to do this. This is not working. We've been together for 10 years. And so we, we need to, I don't know, go out in the tent or something like that. You don't that. want to hurt people's feelings. So you have an affair instead and you ruin a marriage. Sometimes what women want is not like, here's the other thing that men don't understand. Sometimes what women want is not something new and kinky and different and wild. Sometimes what women want is to recapture that feeling of passion where you just want to just kiss us and chew on us and you just can't get enough that's what we want and how do you that's not as simple as putting the necklace in the freezer no that's true um that's why women have affairs routine kind of eats it up exactly what are you supposed to do both quit your jobs i mean you have to be sensible about these things it's the conundrum yeah where are the kids going you're going to put them outside on a leash it's the conundrum oh so the only answer is you know to have an affair no, I'm just telling you. Where's when, the leadership in our marriage here? I'm you know just, what I mean? I'm Jeez. just telling you when women step up, when women are bored, what they're craving is that excitement of that infatuation feeling. Why would anybody get married? Because you're going to get bored and eventually you're craving this excitement. And where's the excitement coming from? Your personal trainer. Look at the divorce rate and ask yourself if you just yeah. answered that question. Yeah. Oh, shut up. Uh, number, uh, number five things they, they would like to, uh, be able to replace with their boring life is getting a dramatic haircut. Yeah. Yeah. I've done that. Number four, quitting their job without having another job already lined up. You ever done that? No. That is exciting. That is, you know, hanging it out there a little bit. No, I ha- not I haven't ever. either. I haven't either. I don't think. I haven't not had a job, whether it was delivering pizza or whatever, since I was like go. 13. Right, me too. Uh, this is this is one of my favorites. One of the top 10 things that women who are bored wish they could do, tell people what they really think. I think that's huge. It could be your sister. could be anybody. Number two, moving to another country. I know it's easy to say that, but how many of us would really have the uh, confidence to move to another country? And uh, what do you think the number one thing is? Any, just about anybody with a little bit of money can do this. Number one thing to replace boredom in your life would be... Move to a different house? Go to the airport and get on the next random flight to anywhere. Don't you... Just have absolutely no idea where you're going. Listen... The way that air travel is now, isn't that what happens every time anyway, you go to the yeah, airport? <laughs> that may be true, too. <laughs> Get Bob and Sherry swag in our store at bobandsherry.com. Swag you can use. Just hit shop at bobandsherry.com. Hey, Lucy. Oh, my goodness. Yes, my mama did just not once, but three times. Um, the first time, uh, she went to the middle school, and my brother was a diabetic, and he apparently ate one of the teacher's low-fat muffins, and, um, you know, his blood sugar was dropping or whatever. He needed something to eat. So she goes up to the school because he gets in trouble for eating the muffin. 
principal comes in there, and I guess out of a reaction, when he touched her arm, she comes up from the left, way down in Mississippi, and comes right up against his side of his head and punched him right in the head. The principal. Your mama That's punched the principal? My Wait a minute. I love principal. your mama and I love you, Lucy, from way down there in Mississippi. Way she did, right? in Mississippi. And she punched <laughs> the principal. And then the next day, she had to go hide out at the lawyer's office because the cops were out looking for her. And she was freaking out because she said, I just punched the principal. So the next day I go to school, and God bless if that principal didn't have to wear a ball cap all day long to cover up the knot that my mama put on his head. You were so wow. proud of her in what that happened? moment, weren't you? What happened to her? What did, did nothing, they? Did, nothing. She got up because I guess because he touched her first, and oh, it was just yeah. like a reaction. Uh huh. But the um, that's the first time it happened. The second time it happened, uh, my brother, uh, when he was in high school, another brother had um, gotten into uh, with a bad crowd, and, and they were, you know, doing, like, marijuana or whatever, you know, just uh-huh. kind of getting into a little bit of drugs. And, and um, my mama found out, and she'd get in her car and follow my brother when he was skipping school. And one day she called him as they were coming back from skipping school and ran him down in the parking lot and blocked the car in and was screaming and yelling and threatening to pull the uh, drug dealer out and, and called it a maggot and all kinds of other stuff. I mean, it was mm. crazy. And these poor kids are sitting in the car like, what in the world, your mom's psycho? And she never <laughs> actually hit any of them, but that the one guy got the nickname maggot for like the rest of his life after my mom called him that. So he was the one that was bringing the dope? Yeah, he was the one that was doing it, yeah. Okay, now what's the third time? The third time happened to me, um, I was in band, and we had a real, real bad band director. He was real condescending, real, um, everything you did was wrong. You know, he was really a horrible band director, but um, I was first chair saxophone player, and, you know, I'd always done really good, but I needed to stay after school to take an exam and not go and play for a little concert that we were doing for the community, and and uh, the band director jumped all over me, and, and um, I just told him, okay, you know, I'm done. I have to take this exam. I, I can't be in the band anymore. Well, they cornered me in the band room office and were just letting me have it. So when I finally got out of there, I go and I call my mom at home, and I told her what happened. I was upset and crying. My mom shows up. She's been out <laughs> doing yard work. She was sweaty. She had on a torn T-shirt. She had grass stains on her old raggedy shoes. Here comes Mississippi and Texas. <laughs> hell you. She came up to the front of the school, and I was all upset, and I was like, I just want to go home. She said, okay. And she, I got in the car. But she made a sudden right turn to go towards the back of the school where the band room was. I said, Mama, what are you doing? She said, I'm going back here to speak to the band director. And I said, please. <laughs> there were like 200 kids in this band room. At this moment, he storms into the band room. It's right in the band director's face. Calls him a P-U-S-S wife in front of the entire band. <laughs> Thank, thanks for not saying that, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Not everyone yeah. can spell, and that's yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. So, so go she on. she called him that. I would the... dearly love to have been there. Go on. What happened then? Then she gets all on his face, and he's a little bit short man, and she gets all on his face and tells me he, if he wants to pick on someone, he's pick on someone his own side, and he's not going to be picking on her daughter, and if he has anything to say, he can call her, and I mean, she just goes on a rant, and as she's leaving, she tries to slam the door to the band room, but they were like revolving doors kind of thing, so it really didn't slam. But the next day I had to go to school. The entire <laughs> school was talking about it, and I just wanted to die of shame. But, I mean, in a way, you know, I'm like, yay, that's my mom. But <laughs> <laughs> no, I, was I gonna, love you, Lucy. Lucy, I was going to ask you that. Like, in a way, did you not feel like, yeah, that's yeah, my mom right did. there? So it's like, finally, somebody told him, you know, where to put it. But in another way, I still had to go to school the next day. And everybody's saying, dude, is your mom not medicated? And like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy, I love your mom, too, but I have to tell you, she is cuckoo as cocoa. Puck. I disagree. I think your mom is amazing. <laughs> nice. And I don't want your mom medicated. I think she that is a mother's love right there. You cannot Quit. call the band director of... <laughs> What's you know, you can't, but what I wouldn't give to have been there. <laughs> what's, the third, next? Th- what's the third time, real quick? That was that the third was, time. Oh, that was, that was it, oh, okay. yeah. We got them all. It was the two brothers and then Lucy. Okay. And then me, yep. It was punching the principal in the head, calling the drug dealer a oh, maggot, and then calling the band dealer, the band uh, director. And again, the, thank you for spelling. The female part. 
Yeah. yeah. Th- <laughs> <laughs> Lucy, that's a great oh, story. <laughs> You're listening to the best of Bob and Sherry. Absolutely. Get the free Bob and Sherry app and instantly get the podcast, the oddcast, and Bob and Sherry fun size. So we were just talking about how human beings are just, we seem to just be wired, you know, in our very biology to find the color red sexy. It's Bob's favorite color. And he gets grief for wearing his red pants, not because they aren't sexy, but because, you know, it's just not a thing in our culture for men to wear brightly colored pants. But what's your favorite thing about yourself that's sexy? Like, what's your favorite Bob sexy? Me? Yeah. Do, do, Are you there? You, Did we lose him? Yeah. Have, yeah. No. Do, do, do you I, have something? I, I, I thought you could have been talking to the audience. I, I didn't realize you were talking to me. Yeah. What's, what's your favorite? What's the, yeah. What's your favorite what, thing about your your favorite sexy thing about yourself? Oh. Um, Did we lose him? <laughs> <laughs> Is he there? Are we, we lose him? I'm thinking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what's What's my favorite? thing about sexy myself that, thing about yourself. that makes me like of, sexy yeah of all the things about you that are sexy what's your personal favorite did we lose uh, them no. I, 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 can i think for a moment jeez i can't help you Bob. i want to help you but i can't say anything this is really pathetic <laughs> you're, you know, you're having a confidence crisis because, you know, there are so many things about you that are sexy and you can't think of a single one. The, well, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of men who I know are sexy, like, you know, um, Patrick Stewart or um, uh, Liam Neeson, Chris Pratt. I'm thinking of, of those. I, I got nothing going on. I look. I look pretty good in somewhat tight jeans. <laughs> I'm pulling that. Can I? With, that's with the book, uh, of, that's with, the book of Bob. <laughs> I, I look somewhat good in uh, not real tight jeans, but but somewhat tight jeans with my blue sneakers. You know. Um, I think that your ability to um, juggle a conversation like at dinner is a very sexy quality that you have. That's not sexy. That's and that's think, that's that's a that's a skill that is questionable. But it's very sexy when you see someone that can really pull that off because it's very like uh, it's like suave, you know. There's like some debonair suaveness about that. That's and I the think, be- I've worked with you for over two decades. You're looking at me, except for the last year, every day, and and my BS ability at, at, at in a dinner party is the sexiest thing about me. Well, I think you have a sexy booty. I've told you that. You've managed to have a real nice one for a real long time. Yeah, I've Once told again, you that. back to the somewhat tight jeans, which was my <laughs> point. You know what? I'm I'm really sad. I'm really sad that this pandemic well, you're has sad. stripped oh, you're sad. you. <laughs> I'm the one. I'm the one that with the Jack Betty pauses because I can't come up with anything. I have pretty That's- good hair. I have pretty you have good, good hair. hair and you have beautiful yeah. eyes. And yeah. listen, I have a terrible walk though. I, I have my father's walk, and every time I walk by a building with glass, I look and I catch myself and I go, "Well, that is the least sexy man on the face of the earth." We need to get you out more. You have lost all of your confident mojo. This yeah. is the saddest day ever that you can't yeah. find one sexy thing about yourself. That's so sad. And I don't get out much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, the sexiest, the sexiest thing about me is the woman on my arm when I walk into a restaurant. That's the sexiest thing about me. You need, you know what? Your self confidence. We got to work on this. We're we're gonna. You oh, know, I can't work on myself anymore. Up, no, 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 no. I can't work on myself. When no. we finish today, we're gonna have a no. period of affirmations where we're no. just gonna say no affirmation periods, please. No. Affirmation period. No. <laughs> It's Bob and Sherry. The Odd Podcast. (laughs) Stuff we wouldn't, couldn't, or shouldn't say on the show. Sent directly to your phone by texting Oddcast to 888-BOB-SHERRY. Life is so cruel. It's just, it's just... You know what the cruelest thing is that you have these expectations that you've built up all your life of the way it's gonna be. And then it it never really is is. the the way (laughs) it's going to be. For instance, you keep hearing about uh, when, when you get the final kid out of the house, 
to go to college or to go to work, whatever your situation is. So we, we uh, wished Hampton luck. We uh, said, proud of you. You're in college now and good luck to you. Right. And now your days will be like this, Bob, you will uh, do the show with Sherry and Max and, you know, have some laughs with your listeners. You'll return some emails, people who love you. And then about four in the afternoon, you'll put on your silk lounging pajamas and perhaps take a nap and then watch a movie or the news. You'll read a book that you've been putting off and have a delightful dinner with just your wife. Um, doesn't really that work. Sounds that sounds nice. Way. That sounds really good, actually. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know it sounds. I know it sounds really yeah. good. It, it just doesn't really work that way because life still wants to screw you up. Like I, I go out to the mailbox and I, what's this from? And it's from the state. And I open it up and it says, "Dear Robert Lacey, you do not evidently have insurance on your car. Caps. Stop driving this vehicle immediately." You have no insurance. And they put a date down that I don't have any insurance. Plus, you owe us $50 for not having insurance. What? What? What is that? So now I'm all upset about this. And I got to track down the insurance agent, a very nice guy named Houston. I said, Houston, I have no insurance. I thought I had insurance with you on this. And he goes, you do. I'm looking at the policy right here on my computer. Well, why do they want $50 and I can't drive anywhere? You can Send me the letter and I'll take care of it. There's always something that's a pain. Like we have, when we bought this house, there's a sprinkler system that was uh, in the ground around the house. Very exciting for me. A sprinkler system. <laughs> I go out there one I go out there one day and there's the guy who is the mole guy. You know, remember I told you about the mole guy? Yeah, I got yeah. moles. You can't kill them. So you got to trap them. So you hire a mole guy. And he calls me over. He goes, uh... Mr. Lacey, uh, there's something bubbling here. Well, I know it wasn't like uh, Jed Clampett and Crude. its oil. It's, <laughs> it, it ain't that. It, it's water coming up from the sprinkler head, right? I go, he said, I think it's a sprinkler. You're going to have to have somebody come over. So I call the, uh, it's not a landscaper. Well, kind of a landscaper. They do a mow and blow in this yard. And I said, uh, can you come over, Richard, and uh, take a look at this? Two weeks later, nothing. So now I got to track him down and track him down. And then I've only seen the guy like twice in my life. So I look in the back and there's there's a guy and he's digging where the uh, the uh, curdling brew is. And I go out and I go, thank you so much for coming, Richard. Uh, my name's Don. Oh, um, I'm sorry, Don. And now I'm all I'm all uptight. And Mary's saying, why'd you call him Richard? I thought he, he looks like Richard. I only seen Richard <laughs> once. <laughs> So you know what that is going to cost to fix, right? My my point is um, that that era does it ever really arrive for average folks, the baton, or is it only arrive for Kardashians and Brad Pitt? The baton just gets hand the baton of hassle just gets handed down from one generation to the next. Remember when I took care of Mia on that really fast road trip up for her visit to Seton Hall? When she yeah. was deciding on her college. Yeah. So Karamia had never, she's had a license for a while, but she'd never driven on the New Jersey Turnpike or the Garden State Parkway. Right, and right. so there are toll booths, but not all of them are manned because of COVID. So right. she, here we come. And there's toll booths about every other second on the Jersey mm -hmm. Turnpike. So oh, yeah. it's Car so Karamia wants to turn at driving. So she's behind the wheel, gripping the wheel with both hands. We come upon the uh, term the turnpike booths, and mm. I said, "Hey, remember you have to. We don't have an easy pass. You have to go to one that's marked cash." Well, do you know what a Jersey slide is? Do you guys know what a Jersey slide is? A, a Jersey slide is a driving maneuver where you come through the toll booths at the bridge or on the turnpike or whatever, and wherever you are, where you need to be is eight lanes of high speed traffic to the right or to the left. <laughs> to the right, okay. yeah, And so yeah, you yeah. come out of the toll booth and you accelerate and you begin sliding across all those lanes of traffic so that you don't mm -hmm. accidentally end up in Sayerville by mistake, right? Mm -hmm. So this is Karamia's first turnpike driving and Karamia's very first Jersey slide, which is a sacred moment in the family. So I'm like, okay, you got to go through one that says cash. She's like, I can't, I have to Jersey slide. I can't do all of these things at once. And she blasts through the, the booth. That's only for easy pass people. The camera oh, takes boy. a picture of our license plate. 
And I was like, calm down. It's okay. They'll just send us a bill in the mail. So she comes through the booth. Jersey slides across the eight lanes of traffic and we keep going. I get the thing in the mail. The cost of the toll was $1.90. But Mm. the punishment for blasting through the lane is $50. (sighs) $50 $50 again with these states. $50. Why is it $50 with these states? $50 make you holler. So now I've got this bill from New Jersey. And New Jersey is so tired of people named Lynch who don't follow traffic laws that they're done. <laughs> so I don't even get, like, thanks to my niece Brittany and my brother, I don't even get, like, a regular, hello, motorist. I get a letter in the mail that basically says, heads up, we ain't here to take your bleep. You give us $51.90 right now or we're coming for you. Why do they have to go nuclear? Why do they have to go nuclear with that first letter? Why do they have to say, don't drive your car? You know? What they should have said in that letter was, and tell Karamia congrats on her first Jersey slide. Because if she'd gotten that wrong, you'd be paying a lot more than $51.90. Promise. You're right. Right adulthood there. adulthood <laughs> is just a buffet of misery. And hey, mm-hmm. enjoy yourself as you're getting the day going now. It's Bob and Sherry. Bob and Sherry, sponsored by Bank of America Customized Cash Rewards Credit Card. You can earn 3% cash back on online shopping, making the essentials even more rewarding. Here's Bob and Sherry. The website Lifehacker has a tip for how to deal with phone calls that you don't want to make. And it made me laugh because... What does it say about us as a species that we look for ways to get out of talking to each other? Yeah. I mean, it's It's true. That's what this is. It's more true for you than me, but it is true. Here's the hack. Um, You've got to make a phone call that you don't want to make. Right. I don't know to who or for what reason, but we all have that phone call at least once a week, we you're calling, all have a call. You're calling we, somebody that's invited you to something you don't want to go, and you've made up something, and you're calling. You them. got RSVP yeah. or you got whatever it is. Right. Open the call with, "Hey, Bob, um, my phone is dying, so we can only talk for a minute." But and then like, oh, that's right good. You know, I've actually done that, and I wasn't lying. And when you've had enough, yeah, just hang up. It'll seem like your phone went dead. You now, could do that. You can't use this too many times with the same person. With the same person, right. Or they're going to buy you a charging cable. Yeah. <laughs> but no, th- but that's right. All I could think about was, wow, there are so many little tips and strategies to help us avoid communicating with each other. There's another one, but it was outed by Bill Maher on TV a few days ago. And, and he's right when he said the thumbs up emoji means this conversation has ended and it's true but doesn't it wouldn't you rather get a thumbs up and i get the thumbs up from you uh, when you when we text wouldn't you rather get a thumbs up and know that we're done here i would then to feel like you have uh, to go on and on and on something should happen now. yeah oh i i know that was fun but uh maybe we'll have an even better time next time thumbs up I don't want to have to say, yeah, I hope we do, and I'm sure we will. One of my cats has weirdly human paws. The texture of his paws, trust me, this isn't. This Where are we connects. going here? Oh, no, wait. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to hear this. That was kind of, Do you really want to hear this? Could you give me your man card? This is going to be good. This is going to be cats with thumbs. This is going to be good. <laughs> The texture of Tiberius's paw pads oh, God. is weirdly human. So when he walks across my phone or my iPad, he activates it. So my phone was sitting on my bedside table and Tiberius walked across it and kind of sat on it. Long story short, he FaceTimed my daughter's old boyfriend. <laughs> And, what were they talking well, about? Well, I wasn't in the room. Yeah. So, of course, I don't realize this is happening. I come back into the room like an hour later to get my phone off the charger. And there's a text message. And it says, hey, I missed your call. Something was weird about the connection. Well, yeah, because my cat's rectum was FaceTiming you because he was sitting on it. Now, if you're hearing that as an excuse, <laughs> if you're the ex-boyfriend... But, you know, why would, like, your, your old girlfriend's mom be FaceTiming you? You know what he's saying right now secretly to himself? You know, maybe I thought for a while I could have married her daughter. <laughs> but 
I'm thinking maybe I got away. Got a away lifetime life. of this, I don't know. So I had to reply with, oh, you know how Tiberius has weirdly human paws. He must have done that by mistake, but how you doing? And now I'm in a conversation that this poor kid probably would do anything to escape from. Can I, can I be honest about FaceTime mm-hmm. right now? I don't, I don't do FaceTime very often. So anything that I don't do very often, of course, it's, it doesn't come naturally to me. So once in a while, I will FaceTime Mary by mistake. And if she's with like Lynette or somebody else, all of a sudden it pops up, Bob, Bob, you're FaceTiming me. Oh, and we're, we're in the middle of something. And Lynette's right there listening to the whole thing. Oh, uh, okay, I'm really sorry. And I'm trying to figure out how to just go somewhere outside of FaceTime. But I hear them laughing at me while I'm trying to figure it out. And it just makes me feel there, like such an idiot. There was one afternoon that Karami and I were driving together to dance. That's all we ever do. And you FaceTimed me. And Karamia said, Mom, it's a FaceTime from Chit Chat. And I said, because the phone was doing that. Brr, brr. Yeah, yeah. And I said, that is a pocket FaceTime. Chit Chat does not FaceTime. Why would he FaceTime me? And of course, the, the call connected. And we could see your phone. I don't know how you did it. Your phone must have been in your console. We could see your leg wearing khakis. And I could see your um, the steering wheel. And we could listen to what you were listening to. And we decided that we would. By the leave, way, I hate all three of those things. We would leave the call up, and we were. Oh, nice! We were shouting at you. Karamia was going, "Chit chat, chit chat! It's me! It's Karamia! Chit chat!" And we were dying laughing. How you didn't hear our voices yelling up at you? Next time, will you just hang up? Because it could get really embarrassing for me, and I worry about that all the time. What would you ca- be doing in the car that could um, be embarrassing? Um, telling the nation how it needs to change. There was a little bit of that. See, because I I'm a, I'm not allowed to do that in my own house, and so if I'm in the car, I feel <laughs> it's my safe place. You were listening. You, know? you were listening to the news, and at one point, Karami yelled, "Language chit chat." <laughs> Um, so oh, I know that's you real. Don't. People are thinking you're FaceTime. making that up, no. but no, that's true. I know that's you true. don't. Please, please uh, turn that off next time. All right. All right. Let me. Uh, this is how much I want you to uh, turn it off. I'll pinky swear. You'll pinky swear. Yeah. You'll pinky swear with me. I'll. Pi- you'll pinky swear. You're Just initiating a Just, pinker yes. swear. Oh, I'll tell pinky me you, swear. you'll stop it. Pinky right. swear. There I'll turn it, it off right next time. Right. <gasps> he initiated a pinky swear. Yeah. I'm buying a lottery let, ticket. Let the word go out. Yeah. It's Bob and Sherry. The Odd Podcast. <laughs> Stuff we wouldn't, couldn't, or shouldn't say on the show. Sent directly to your phone by texting Oddcast to 888-BOB-SHERRY. Let's go to Jane right now. Hi, Jane. Hi. How are you today? Good. Oh, good. You want to hear about your perfect night? Well, I was actually going through a really bad divorce about, let's say, six and a half years ago. And my best friend that I knew since I was 12 years old somehow set up this amazing wonderful thing we got this beautiful hotel room he had wine and these gorgeous glasses that he apparently got engraved with how long we had been friends for and candles and i never looked at him to be a romance thing but it was the most amazing night of my life and now we've been married for six years i just want i just have to ask i have so many questions all the times i've had a bitter miserable divorce and nothing? Not a single engraved wine glass from you? Nothing? Well, you know, I I drove by your house to make sure that the <laughs> lights were on and you were moving around. Todd once and... scratched a pornographic stick figure into a PBR can for me, but you, nothing? Nothing? Oh, you're really kicking my butt this morning for this. <laughs> you gotta go there. I'm feeling <laughs> terrible about this. Um, I, I have to ask you a question, Jane. So th- you've known this person since you were 12. And you and... never thought of him as a romantic interest. No, he's a blonde hair, blue eyes guy, and I'm a dark hair, dark eyes type of girl. That's the kind of guys I like. So, so I've never so looked at him like that. He called you up to cheer you up, to have uh, your spirits raised, and yeah. he he booked a, a nice hotel room and did all of this with the wine glasses, with the engraving, and all of that. And did you know that you were going to spend the night with him? No, not even. I thought we were just going to go hang out and he was going to, you know, goof around like he does because he's a big jokester and, you know, try to make me laugh or whatever. But it was nothing even like that. It was all lovey, romantic. It was it was very 
weird at first, and then it was did amazing. You, did you think that you were going to sleep in the same king-size bed with him and just have a platonic night? Yes, I did think that. <laughs> Are you crazy, Jane? Are you? Well, we had done that before. We had, you know, fallen asleep together, no big deal, whatever. He's just my friend. It's, and we've been, she's been, friend, well, friends for 16 years. Women, women are amazing. And, women are amazing. I have never been in that experience where I have been in a bed with a woman and we're just friends and we both just fall asleep. Real? <laughs> never. I think you're too tense for that. Too tense. Mm-hmm. I think you would be too possible. tense to let that happen. Why couldn't you say you're, you know, you're just too much of a animal or anything? Oh, too, I'm sorry. You're too tense. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're, you're, you just be this ball of tension in the bed. No one would get any sleep. Not you're so sexually charged that you know you couldn't keep your hands, your ravenous <laughs> hands, off of this woman. No, you're too tense. That's 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 my new rap name. Two tens. <laughs> two, two, and I'll use the number two. It's perfect for you. It's two tens. God. That's the best rap name ever for you. Thanks for ruining my day, Jane. <laughs> but it's true. You would be two tens. <laughs> it's awful of you. But anyway, back to you, Jane. And who knows um, it better? <laughs> back to you, Jane. So um, you had a romantic <laughs> night. Did you instantly see him in a different light when he, when he first put his arm around you and drew you to him? Yes. Wow. It was, it was just, was it, wow. It was mind-blowing, honestly, because at that point, we had, we had been friends for 10 years at that point. I'm looking at I'm looking at Sherry right now, and I just can't. We've been friends for 20 years. I just, let me see now. <laughs> if I put my Come arm, on, arm <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I'm too tense. I, I really am. And and you're married now, Jane. Yes. Wonderful. You have children. Yes. That's fantastic. What a story. What a night. You still have those glasses? Actually, yes, we do. He has up on top of our shelf right in our living room. He really wanted. He was always in love with you. you know I that? think. I, I'm guessing. I think so. He was yeah. always in love with you, but he didn't feel that he could. He could make the move for whatever reason. He didn't have the confidence. Then you were with somebody else. That's great. And you're happy. Very. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, on the one hand, for being a very good caller with an interesting story, and uh, never call again because now I have a new nickname that I don't like. <laughs> I, I, I have a lot of them. I'm sorry. That's all right, sweetie. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're sorry. <laughs> I'm too tense. You know what I just heard? What? It's the best <laughs> Bob and Sherry. The best, the best. You guys kill me. I love you, Bob and Sherry. Oh, thank, thank you, you so much. But it gets better. Get Lord's reviews sent to your phone and qualify for a Fandango gift card. Text MOVIE to 888-BOB-SHERRY. I, All right. I know you don't really believe in astrology, um, but Zodiac Fact, which is one of the things I follow on Twitter, uh-huh. um, um, tweeted a bunch of um, one-liners about each astrological sign, and tell me this. Tell me this isn't true, okay? Just give me this one little piece of truth. Who, who Are you has ready? a more open mind than me? Huh? I'm going home. Um, How much time is there in this break? <laughs> Go ahead. A let's Virgo. hear it. Let's hear it. Wide open. I'll, I'll describe, I'll say what it says about me first and tell me if you disagree. All right. A Capricorn can't go one day without being an overachiever. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's true. Yeah, that is true. It's my curse and my blessing, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's true. A Capricorn Mm -hmm. can't go one day without being an Mm -hmm. overachiever. A Virgo can't go one day without overthinking. (laughs) It's really... um... Mean. It's really true, but it's you're mean. upset about it. Well, I mean, you, you're coming on like people always admire overachievers. Oh, don't be an overachiever, but they admire them secretly. You're and saying then, nobody admires nobody an admires overthinker? an overthinker. No. So that starts off my day, you know, with a foot in the bucket. You know what I mean? Well, let's. I mean, thanks. Let's rethink this. Is it true that let's just no one, drop it? Is it true that no one admires an overthinker? No one does. No. It just, it, it says, this person is, is so uptight and so paranoid that he can't get out of his own way. Even, and, and he has, you know what, he's got no game. 
because he sees what it is. Then he goes, oh, I could be wrong because I don't believe in myself. And, and, and he thinks it and thinks it and thinks it. Who wants to be around somebody like that? Do you Who feel- would admire that? You know what? I hope little Jimmy here grows up to be an overthinker. Here's what it is. <laughs> and Who's over- ever heard that? An overthinker is thought to be a person of inaction. That's why. Inaction? Yes. An that, overthinker. That is not me. That is, I know that that's not, not you, but I'm just saying that's what that's what we've <laughs> many said. times my actions are wrong <laughs> or misled. And that gives you something to think about. Yeah, that I have to think about. That oh, don't do that again. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope little Jimmy grows up to be an overthinker. <laughs> you ever heard that? You ever heard anybody say that about their kid? We're sure excited about her. She's she's only four, but she's showing all the signs of being an overthinker. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Overthinkers Anonymous. <laughs> My name is Bob. Hi, Bob. Mm. I don't think I overthink everything. I used to shoot from the hip a lot. Got you into a lot of trouble. Yeah, it did. That's when I became an overthinker. <laughs> After <laughs> An overthinker. <laughs> So an overthinker, he never gets anything done? Is that what it is? Uh, listen, I'm, you're reading all this stuff into it. Else? What I else told you it it's one-liners. A uh, Capricorn can't go one day without being an overachiever. A Virgo can't go one day without being an overthinker. A Scorpio can't go one day without feeling in control. You know when I became an overthinker? I became an overthinker when some, some things started going wrong in my life. And not the obvious ones that I've uh, experienced in the last couple of years, but... Just uh, some time ago. Little thing, things. Yeah. Small little things. things that, you know, sometimes turn into big things. And so you start, you know, perhaps analyzing a little bit more. And, and as you get a little bit older, I, I think you start, you know, analyzing a little bit more. Oh, I don't want to go there. That could be what, bad. What would be a good, let's say you are raising a young overthinker. Um, what are some good careers where that overthinking can be harnessed and, and made to serve the greater good. Think tank. Oh, yeah. I mean, what better place for an overthinker than a think tank? Whatever happened to Bob? Oh, he he's in a Washington think tank. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. He, they found out he was an over... Uh, what is it? <laughs> overthinker. An overthinker. <laughs> and so they hired him for a think tank in Washington. All day long, he's in an office where he thinks. <laughs> and then he comes out and he tells them what he, what he thinks. <laughs> oh, like you wouldn't enjoy that? Oh, I, I'm not saying I wouldn't enjoy that. I'd love it. <laughs> that last part where yeah. you get to come out of the tank yeah. and share your thoughts. That's that, exactly that'd right. That would be the best part of the day. Yeah. Mary, I'm, I'm leaving radio to join a think tank. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be thinking mm-hmm. all about everything. Say what? Um, same old, same old. <laughs> so, what besides a think tank? It would an overthinker be good at? Would an overthinker be a good um, analyst, policy analyst? Yeah, yeah, policy analyst. Yeah. But you know what? Overthinkers tend to be uh, middle management, and and not the big thinkers. I I, I know this. Think about the people that yeah, we work right. with. Who spent spend two hours crafting a memo about sharpening your pencil in the break room? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that see, that's not me. That, that's, that seriously. No, because you're you're over you're a specialized overthinker. <clears throat> you know, you're not just some run of the mill middle management overthinker. It sounds like a good thing, Bob, you're but spe- I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, you're a I don't specialized think you're a <laughs> overthinker. You ever notice when there aren't many of them, it's not good. <laughs> It's Bob and Sherry. Congratulations, Sherry Lynch. Named one of the most influential women in radio again this year. It's Bob and Sherry. These are four things that can ruin your looks. Well, let's face it. We all like to look good, right? I don't care who you are. You, you would like to look as good as you can. And these are four things that will ruin your looks. I'm going to start with number four and go to number one. Are you listening, Todd? Yes. I know. I know <clears throat> you know what one of them is? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't turn your head. Mm-hmm. Drinking, right? Drinking. Well, there's a couple on here that I think you ought to. Well, you don't have to worry about this first one. Touching your face. Your hands pick up all kinds of dirt and bacteria and grease during the day. 
And when you touch your face, all that stuff starts clogging up your pores. And then if you rub your face, it's even worse because it pulls your skin in different directions and creates wrinkles. How can you keep from touching your face? It's hard. It, it, Wouldn't it is you hard. have to pull on your face a lot to create wrinkles? I guess you would. But I mean, if you just, lean on your face, like, like I'll lean on my palms sometimes. They say if you sleep sometimes. on your side, you can oh, jack you up kidding? your face. That's yeah. all I do. I sleep well, on my side. I guess you don't care about your looks, do you? <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, that's why they encourage you to sleep on your back. I can't sleep on my back. I don't know how you do that. How do you do that? How do you sleep on your back? It's so, it's Very abnormal. comfortably, thank you. It's abnormal. <laughs> it's abnormal. Staring at the ceiling like that. I don't know how you do that. Well, you close your eyes, I think, when you're sleeping. Well, I know, but I mean, initially, you just... You clo- do, are you telling me that you go to sleep by waiting? There's no comfort to... You lay there with your eyes open waiting to fall asleep? Yeah. You don't climb in bed and close your eyes? No, I do close my eyes, but I, I mean, I have to be on my side with a pillow a certain way. It's just, it's very comforting to me. With mm-hmm. I have to have two pillows and one comfort... One is like aligned to my body almost, you know? And I have large foam pillows. Aren't you amazed that you have a woman sometimes, like when you hear yourself? You know, to be honest with you, to be honest with you, because I know Todd I know. every day. He's like, yeah, he's got a woman, I, and I got a great one too. I know. Oh, it's just the way it's worked out for me. Um, <laughs> the uh, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> what did she say? It's just the way it's worked out for her. <laughs> yeah. No. I said, does she say that too? <laughs> she started to say that a little more than she used to. Yeah. I can see that. Uh, another uh, habit that can ruin your looks, too much drinking. Alcohol dehydrates you, which makes your skin wrinkly. And even one night of binge drinking will make the lines on your face more defined the next day. Plus, drinking a few beers a night adds several hundred calories to your diet, which can lead to a beer gut. Well, I think we all know that. You know, I've, I've known people, they stop drinking and they lose you know, like 10 pounds. Number two, tanning. Having a tan may make you look good now, but if you do it too much, your skin will turn to leather and look wrinkled if you don't use enough sunblock. I still I still don't get it, but more and more young women go to tanning beds. They're still as popular as they ever were. They think that um, it's only tanning from the sun that gives you these, these issues. That's what they oh, think. Oh, is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you saying the tanning beds don't... Uh... They do, but people don't realize that. Oh, you mean people think... Yeah. I see. I see. All right. Well, I mean, everything in moderation, you have to have a little sun. And uh, the number one thing that can ruin your looks, that would be smoking, Mr. Todd. You know this. Smoking is awful for your body. But when you smoke, free radicals form and damage your DNA. They damage your DNA. Plus, you get smoker lips. He won't come to the microphone now. No, he won't, will he? It's right near him. You could be damaging your DNA. So when you have more children, which undoubtedly you will. (laughs) This could be very bad. <laughs> I made myself laugh at that one. <laughs> um, the result is bad skin and deep wrinkles. I mean, you ever seen somebody that smokes a lot for years? I smoked for years. I smoked for years and years. Now, it's been years since I gave it up. But you can see this line right over here on my face. That's from smoking? That's from smoking, I'm sure. Yeah, just because that's where I, I used to smoke on that side of my face. What do you mean you smoked Isn't on that, that side? Of your, you Isn't talk out funny? of the other side, you'd think it would have balanced. <laughs> That's why I had to smoke out of that side. Yeah, I had to smoke out on the one side because the other side. <laughs> that I'm was talking, the talking side. Yeah. <laughs> you know, between his report card, his smoking, my talking on both sides of our mouth, we're a great crew to be with. Them, right? <laughs> <laughs> don't feel like Mrs. Perfect. So that, I don't even know what you're talking about, but you're saying you have a line on your face yeah. from smoking out that side. I, I, How I do you spend... smoke out one side of your mouth? You'd, you'd put it. You'd put it on the oh, side. Oh, you would have it dangling casually, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> like some French movie character <laughs> with his beret on. No, but uh, you'd put it in your mouth. You don't put it right in the middle of your mouth and smoke. I don't know. I've never smoked. You you don't put the cigarette in the middle. You put I it on one think side. So. I don't know. Let me put my. Let me see. Let like me get this, this pen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see. He's like this. You've come to my favorite that wine That hangout doesn't look again, right, putting it on one Welcome. side. I mean, I don't have a very big mouth, but still. Yeah, think of Bogart. You ever see pictures of Bogart? He didn't have the cigarette in the middle of his mouth. He had it on one side, you right? You put it in your mouth and you... Out of it's one side. because he would leave it dangling. Did you walk around with one dangling out dangle. of your mouth? I didn't dangle. I was not a, a dangling smoker, no. Well, then you probably... Wouldn't you put it in the middle of your mouth to draw on it? I, I, I think it was on this... You still have to suck. You still have to suck. Don't... And, and, yeah. <laughs>
and that's why I got this wrinkle. <laughs> let's just let's just drop it at that, or you will be with us. Someone's just tuning and going. He's sucking out of what? <laughs> you know what I just heard? What? It's the best <laughs> Bob and Sherry. Best, the best. You guys kill me. I love you, Bob and Oh, thank, thank you so you. much. Leave us a talk back. Talk back with the free Bob and Sherry app. All right, Damien joins us right now. Damien, did you uh, have a kind of twisted sort of a punishment? Yeah. What, uh, what were you doing point. wrong? What were you doing wrong, Damien? Well, I went to my friend's house, and my mom told me if I was back at a certain time, she was going to lock me out, and I didn't believe her. And I guess that was your mistake, wasn't it? Yeah. She locked me out, and I had to sleep outside. What What time of the year was it? Uh, this, It was a, almost... Come on, there's only winter four. Time. There's four seasons. Which which one was it? Winter time. It, it was <laughs> winter time. Yes. Where did you sleep outside? Uh, we had. I'm yeah. sorry. You got to pick a season, though. I mean, I, I, it's my job is to. You know what? I want to give Bob credit here move for a second, along. Damien, because um, I was like going to bust your chops with, dude. There are 12 months. Pick one. Bob made it even easier. He yeah. gave you the four move, seasons. Just, just let me know. <laughs> All right, back to you, Damien. So where did you sleep outside in the winter? We had this little fold-up camper, and uh, I slept out there, but it was still really cold. I bet it was. Did you have any kind of covers or anything? I had two covers, but I was still cold. Was this, um, w- what part of the uh, of the uh, of the country was that? Now, there are 50 states. I'm going to give you a heads up here. All right? But, but regionally, uh, Midwest, states. South, where were we? <laughs> I was in North Carolina. In North Carolina. I can get I'm, cold in, in the, the winter. wintertime. Yeah, I don't care. Right. It's cold. That's yeah. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I couldn't do this to one of my kids because yeah. I would be afraid of something terrible happening, but I admire your mom. Was it the coast, mom. the Piedmont, or the mountains? It was the foothills. The foothills. Oh, that, that's very chill. Were your blankets cotton or some synthetic? <laughs> they were like a synthetic cotton. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, synthetic yeah. hodgepodge. Um, what'd your mom have to say to you the next morning when you came into the, the house? The next morning, she said, I told you I was going to lock you out, so, and you didn't believe me, so I did it. Did you learn your lesson, Damien? Uh, no. You didn't I, learn uh, from that experience at all, my friend? <laughs> no, I still go to my friend's house, but I come back on a certain, at a certain time I have to. That's an example. That, then you did learn the lesson. I learned a little bit. So you learned at least to make curfew, right? Now, um, there's a baby in the background. Is that your baby? That's my nephew. Your Ooh. nephew. Okay. Oh, okay. You're missed there. Um, <laughs> I wish he was mine, though. I do. I do. I wish he was mine. I love him to death. You love him like he's yours. Hey, why'd your mother complain about you staying over there too long? She named you Damien. <laughs> well... <laughs> Was that ever a problem as a kid? Was that a problem? No. Well, for her, I don't know because she likes me to be at home, and I guess I didn't finish my chores before I went to my friend's house and she got mad. Yeah. Damien, what do you do now? Are you all grown up now? Um, I work at a warehouse. And Good. you're and you're all Good. grown up. And are you yeah. are you married or single? Yes, I'm single. You're single. So are you are you still living at mom's house? Uh, yeah. I help her out because she has a kidney problem. Good for you. You're a good son. Heart you yeah, are a good you're son. You're a good son. She did. You that. know, her methods were a little unorthodox, but she raised a good man. Yeah. And he loves he loves the nephew, wishes that uh, that he yeah. was hers, listen, listen, his, uh, listening to him. I'm not getting that vibe. <laughs> God bless you, David. You know? God bless you for caring about that youngster. <laughs> We got to go. <laughs> Damien, good luck Damien, to you. Really God bless like you, you for helping Thank your you. mama. Thank yeah. you for listening. Ooh. Welcome to the Bob and Cherry store. You can stock up for summer with deals down every aisle. With Bob and Cherry swag you can use, including a really big 24-ounce Bob and Cherry latte mug, plus Bob and Cherry travel mugs and H2O Go bottles, plus our brand new Mother of All Mothers line with oversized teas, candles, enormous tote bags, and more. Just hit shop at bobandcherry.com. Oh. Wait a while for 
us a talk back. Talk back with the free Bob and Sherry app. What people really want in a romantic partner 2021 edition. Ranker asked a thousand new voters and the the rankings have changed with what people want this year as opposed to previous years. Would you like to hear the biggest turn ons? Uh, someone who is not much of a talker. Is that on the list? <laughs> would you like to hear them? Yeah. I would. Okay. Uh, the best traits in a woman. This is what men want right now. Um, number ten is to be funny. Number nine, pleasant and friendly. In love with me. Smart. Kind-hearted, loving, honest, supportive, and the number one best trait the guys are looking for: loyal. The best traits in a man. Number 10, faithful. Then thoughtful. Number eight is responsible. Seven is dependable. And by the way, responsible and dependable are not even on what men want. Uh, loyal, (laughs) Loyal is number five. Honest is number four. Three is kind. Number two is loving. And the best trait that, uh, that women want in a man is to be trustworthy. So it's faithful, thoughtful, responsible, dependable, respectful, loyal, honest, kind, loving, and trustworthy in a man. I'm so much lower maintenance. Here's what I want. A tidy Mm -hmm. eater who's not much of a talker. That'll get me through 2020. <laughs> that's that's all it takes. Wow, you yeah. are you are uh, in an easy lift there. What has Food, changed? Fork, Th- mouth, shh. <laughs> We're good. All right. Uh, those attracted to women have become a little less superficial. Attractive was the number four most important trait in women last year, and this year it didn't even break the top ten. So men were looking for something more than just the physical uh, attraction. Honesty and loyalty are less important. To men. The number one most desired trait in men last year was honest, but this year it's number four. Everybody wants a pleasant woman. We're not really sure what people meant, as I'm reading here, when they said pleasant, uh, but it's in the top ten. What What is a pleasant person romantically? Oh, he's pleasant. Someone who's not negative, um, someone who's not argumentative, Mm -hmm. someone who is friendly to um, visitors and relatives, someone who someone who doesn't follow you around, making your life just a little bit harder uh, Mm -hmm. by virtue of his or her presence. That would Mm -hmm. be my definition of someone who's pleasant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pleasant is, I I don't know, it's it's sort of uh, just... (sighs) It, it, it should be there as a basic, shouldn't it? You're a pleasant person. Yeah, but a lot of people are not pleasant people and don't realize Why would it. you want to be with it? Why would you want to be with someone who's not pleasant? That's I don't baseline. think anybody sets out and says, you know, I'm, here's what I'm shooting for. I'm <laughs> shooting for kind of an unpleasant dirtbag who's a messy eater. <laughs> Let me know if you know anybody. But you don't uh, shoot for it. It just sort of happens. And sometimes happens, people, yeah. sometimes people <laughs> become unpleasant because of the things that life is doing to them. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. But, yeah. but there are people that are just they just sort of have an unpleasant nature. I mean, you know, people like this. We've worked Mm -hmm. with people like this. That you know, the sun is shining, the sky is blue, things are reasonably okay, and they can find something crappy in all of that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Good good, people uh, going on here. Good listeners are no longer needed. A good listener was not even on the list for female partners. I think you all have just given up. You've given up on us being good listeners. (laughs) <laughs> and just said, please be clean and don't speak too much. Intelligence. Well, one thing I've learned in the lockdown is um, I've said everything, so you don't need to listen anymore. <laughs> right. Just be pleasant. Right, right. Intelligence became more important in women and less important in men. Intelligence is important in any romantic partner, but it seems more valued in women than in men. Smart drop from number nine to number 15 this year. And... Blondes are back in style. Both the hottest man and the hottest woman of 2020 are blondes. Chris Hemsworth and Scarlett Johansson. They were considered the sexiest, biggest turn-ons. I guess when 
When I think about what makes Chris Hemsworth or Scarlett Johansson hot, hair color wasn't even on my short list. I mean, it's Chris Hemsworth and Scarlett Johansson. Seriously. They're not even human. You can't <laughs> really? even you can't use them as a yardstick for any. Well, they're both they're both blondish, though. I yeah. mean, uh, you know, they're both blondish. They're not platinum blondes, but they're both blondish. Hmm. Scarlett Johansson colored her hair? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Scarlett. I know you're I know. interested. I don't, please, please, don't embarrass yourself. I don't yourself. like brunettes. Don't, I don't yeah. like brunettes, Scarlett. <laughs> <laughs> I, get, I get the whole thing like with, could you just be pleasant? Could you mm-hmm. just be pleasant? It's a big deal. It it's really a bigger is. Deal. Yeah, I think so, too. It is. It's a bigger deal than you realize until you find yourself cooped up with an unpleasant person. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, yeah. gosh, you know, you're awfully unpleasant. <laughs> it sounds like such a 50s thing to ask of somebody. It just you know, seems baseline. Just, yeah. It's so like black and white sitcom. Yeah. Could you just be pleasant? I but, know. I know. That's right. You know, um, anybody that's turned, let's look, looked at the news or accessed your social media just in the past 24 hours knows that unpleasant is the brand right now for everybody it's bob and sherry (laughs) you're listening to the best of bob and sherry absolutely the fun size podcast the shareable bite size portion of the show get it by texting fun size to 888 bob sherry i have such great news for you bob and it's great news for me and it's great news for so many people out there i haven't been able to bring you news this great in a long time are you ready yes you know how you are you know how you worry and you overthink and you worry and you overthink and you, you ruminate and you chew on things and you're stressed and anxious and you cannot let anything go? I don't know how to reply. He's grinding on that now. I don't know how to reply. Being neurotic is going to make you live longer. Yeah? Yes. Did I not tell you this was Awesome news. Because I'm always looking out for what anvil could land on my head. According to science, and this is legit stuff, okay? This is totally legit stuff. Um, And you can read about this in the uh, Psychological Science Journal. Mm -hmm. Um, They just did this huge thing. People who are like you are hyper vigilant about their health and safety. Uh And so they live longer. You know, it makes sense, does it I not? I think so. I thought you'd be happy. Why aren't you happier? I well, I'm it's I'm letting it sink in because it never works out that way. For instance, <laughs> there's an area where uh, I live, and there's like a shopping center on one side and a shopping center on the other side, and cars are coming in and out of both shopping centers, especially at certain times of the day. And then there's a Y near there, and they're coming out of there, and it's just it's crazy. So I'm driving over there, and I can't see all the cars because it gets very congested. So, uh, you know, I'm slowing down. Then is this one coming out of this shopping center? And I, and I put the brake on a little bit. And Mary goes, why are you so jumpy? Here's why. I don't want to get T-boned. This is, this is the best news for you. And, and I, I've got more good news inside of that good news. So take a minute to soak it in, okay? Okay. Like there's a lot of different ways that people can be neurotic. Mm-hmm. But there's a specific type of neurotic person And that person is called the worried slash vulnerable neurotic. These are the people like you who worry and they they're troubled. They stew on things. They chew on things. They brood on things. They overthink things. That's you. Those people live even longer than other neurotic people. So we don't drive ourselves crazy or give ourselves high blood pressure or you know, other things, bad diseases? Um, well, they found that that uh, you're more vigilant. Yeah. So you... L- let's, let's start like calling you notice, me vigilant. You notice things about yourself where yes. you go, I'm, I'm twitching a little bit or I'm not sleeping well or whatever, and you go to the doctor. You're way right. more... Like, look how much more likely you are to go to the doctor than I right. am. Right. Yeah, that's right. Right? Well, uh, I, I think I'm more likely to go to the doctor than a lot of guys. Men are notorious for not going to the doctor. Now and the, then something happens. Now, the only thing that was, well, I mean, there's a lot of interesting things here, but. Um, Be- before you go on, so we're going to we're gonna have a reset that <laughs> I am not twitchy and neurotic and crazy. I'm vigilant. Vigilant. Are you more comfortable with that? Much more. Much more. Max and Todd, can we agree to remember to refer to him as vigilant? vigilant. The, the vigilant one. 
You kind of like that because it makes you feel like a sheriff in the old yeah, West. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or like I live in Robin Hood times, you know what I mean? And you'll need to start floating this by Mary. You'll need to use this at home. Oh, I'm not floating it. I'm throwing it in her face. <laughs> Just start saying things yeah. like, Mary, because I'm vigilant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello, Mary. The vigilant one is home. All is safe. The thing that's the, that was interesting that the um, scientists found, they said that people like you who mm-hmm. are the best kind of neurotic. Vigilant. <laughs> It, it doesn't stop you You have from to start using the word, okay? Vigilant, okay. Yeah. It doesn't stop you from making bad choices around, like, um, what you eat or drink or people who smoke. Like, mm-hmm. you can be as vigilant as you are and still choose. You don't, mm-hmm. but you could still smoke. Yeah. You know, it's not it's not a perfect magic no, shield. No, no, But for the vigilant like yourself, you are the best flavor of neurotic. My, my shield has a giant B on it. Mine too. For vigil. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's something else, but yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Well, that's good. Yeah, I'm going to uh, strongly mention this to the wife. So, like, sit up a little straighter and try uh-huh. that. Uh, try this on for size. I, Bob Lacey, I'm not an overthinking, anxious, worrying, neurotic. I, Bob Lacey, am vigilant. I, Bob Lacey, am not an overthinking, anxious, neurotic. I, Bob Lacey, am the vigilant one. Doesn't that feel better? Oh, so yeah. good. Yeah. That's nice. And the payoff, I probably could live long. Yeah. Than some crazy maniac that doesn't, you know, even realize. It's chill. The chill? Yeah. The chill, the chill are like, oh, what's this yeah. weird bump on my arm? I'm yeah. just going to ignore that, right? But yeah. the vigilant. Yeah. The vigilant never ignores it. That's right. That's exactly right. All right. Well, I'm going to go home and check myself for moles. (laughs) (laughs) And feel good about... I'm going to let the wife check me for moles. Let her be a participant in your vigilance. Let her get a double scoop. (laughs) Get out. Yeah. And generous. Yep. What a day you're having over here. It's Bob and Sherry. The Fun Size Podcast, the shareable bite size portion of the show. Get it by texting Fun Size to 888 Bob Sherry. So we've got to bring Max on right now. If you're a regular listener, you know that every once in a while he will read from his spam box on his computer and he gets some really interesting women who want to be a part of Max's life. What's going on? Um, so <clears throat> I will read these out to you. Uh, this one is from Miss Anna. And so uh, she's the subject is, how is life my beneficial, my cupcake? Smiley face. <laughs> my snookums, where are you from? How old are you? How is life? At the moment, I am searching for adroit man. <laughs> well, you're an adroit man. Although, let me just say, Bob is the beneficial. <laughs> Bob, you're the adroit cupcake. Bob is the yeah. best. <laughs> um, this next one is uh, from Miss Mia. Salutation, my precious Sir Choice. I hope you're able to listen to this. I hope you're able to hideous small talk. <laughs> wait, wait. Max. <laughs> All small you, talk is hideous. <laughs> Max, you must now be known as Sir Choice. <laughs> when was the last time you heard anyone say, salutations? Um, then she says, amusing Mr. Inimitable greeting. How do you like today? Let's tense talk. Let me just say, the tense talk comes after you've been together for a few years that's right yeah it's too early for that where do you stay now today (laughs) i'm not looking for corking not young buddy i am not looking i'm sorry she's not looking for what what corking corking i I don't know what that means i I don't think it's dirty i do really for corking (laughs) yeah (laughs) Hey, Sir Choice, I think you might be wrong. Not looking for wrong. quirking, I, young second. buddy. She later yeah. says, I am unsurpassable. 
Might want to rethink That's... that corking, then. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say she's dreaming of the corking. All right, this next one is um, from Miss Ida. It says, Bona j- Buongiorno, my I hope you can disgusting speak. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know what that Once means. Once again, may you yeah. tell you what, you, you, at, you attract a certain Just type of this. woman. Yeah. May you grotesque talk with me. Mm. Grotesque talk. Whoa. Whoa. Then she says, my mister, my unsurpassed. I am untarnished woman. At this moment, I am seeking tidy mail. Well, (laughs) you know what? You should respond. You should respond. uh, Here is your disgusting talk. Have you liked caulking? Corking? (laughs) Have you liked? Uh, This one. Hey, this one, the subject line says, hey, my smiley face, how come, question mark? My wow. one and only Mr. Wealthy. Ooh, uh-oh. How are you? Where do you stay now? She doesn't want to know where I stayed before. She wants to know where I stay now. Isn't it funny that she's asking, where do you stay rather than where do you live? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I, I know whoever. What's this country, do you think? Is it is it a uh, a former Russian satellite country? You know what this is to me? This sounds like somebody has written something and then put it through a translator. Yeah. 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 Um, anyhow, <clears throat> soon I am speaking warm, not young buddy. Hmm. I was more comfortable with the hideous yeah, small I was too. talk. Yeah, than I yeah, I know. One. That's getting um, a little personal. Hello, I hope you can chat, my clear soundly. Could I ask you a question? Where are you right now? Huh. <laughs> wow. What's ashamed talk? <laughs> can I? Can I just? I've been ashamed of things that I've said, but I've never gone in with the let's ashamed talk. Do you think that the, that a shame talk in the other one? She's talking about you know just kind of risque talk yeah. back and yeah, forth. Yeah, of course. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure that I that's, think what, that's it what it is. Yeah, um, wow. Here we go. Uh, Everybody's got the internet. <laughs> this is from Miss Lisa. Salutation again with that. I hope you are attentive. <laughs> well, apparently I'm not. Based on past experience, I'm not attentive. Uh, <laughs> wish to small talk, my Mister Lively. Good evening, my goodish. I hope you can I'm, speak. Oh, I can. Grotesque talk. I, I'm going to go with calling Max Mr. Lively rather than the other one. <laughs> then Sir Choice. <laughs> then for, Sir Choice. For now, yeah. I You am, know what? You know what? Um, that is very attainable, though, to be goodish. You're yes. not great. You're not fantastic. Goodish. You're not bad. You're goodish. Yeah. I am I looking like- for benign buddy. Well, that's me. Benign buddy. And uh, and that's it. That's all of them. Um, benign buddy is not a good handle for you to have. I think it's uh, what was the first one, sir? What? Sir choice. Sir choice. Sir, sir yeah. choice. My yeah. dependable. Sir choice and the hideous small talk is my favorite. Right. Where do you think that's from? Which country do you think that's from? Uh, it's Ukraine is one that w- the one that keeps yeah. on coming up. So That's what it sounds like, yeah. That's what it sounds like. And this is as close to Ukrainian music as I could get. So just so you know. <laughs> hey, you have listen, no apologies. Could, hey, listen, Sir Choice, you could do a lot worse. <laughs> there are people that don't get any of these come-ons in their spam folder, okay? That's right. All right. That's right. You know what I just heard? What? It's the <laughs> best Bob and Sherry. <laughs> best the best. You guys kill me. I love you, Bob and Sherry. Oh, thank, thank you, you so much. Hey, thank you so much for listening to the Bob and Sherry podcast and the Bob and Sherry Oddcast. We would love if you would subscribe, rate and review and share it with a friend on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, wherever you go. And thank you again for listening. Birthdays, holidays, promotions, there's a lot in this world worth celebrating. But nothing is worth celebrating more than knowledge that pays off. Like understanding how compound interest works, knowing how to check your investment professional's background, or figuring out your risk tolerance. Or finally understanding those terms your friends throw around like ETF, ESG, and ICO. Learn about these investment products and more at Investor.gov, your unbiased resource for valuable investment information, tools, and tips. Before you invest, Investor.gov.